Ultimate Draft Physics video. Somebody posted a link to this. Joe Rogan and Sean Carroll on the double slit experiment and they play the Dr. Quantum video. And um, you know, I think any physicist in, who has an opportunity to say something like, well, this is a terrible video. This is a terrible misrepresentation of the actual experiments that have been done. It's just absolute crap and they don't do that that just kind of illustrates that this these these people are just full of crap uh, I, I you know i guess i have to do these in like a come up with a these guys are full of shit maybe I, and then i'll just do volume one just play different ones of these clips of these professional physicists who are just making shit up Give me some volume so I can hear what you're saying. Oh, I think this is from what yeah, the bleak you're talking it about, right? Yeah, that's from exactly. The, yeah. the double slit experiment. Right. The back screen See. shows that yeah. intensity. This is similar to the line the marbles make. But when we add the second slit, something different happens. <laughs> so, <clears throat> there's the first just overt lie, right? So, the single slit, the small aperture... This is something Newton did a ton of experiments on. These are Newton's rings. Okay, before it was called Einstein's rings, it was Newton's rings. So, let's go through the real history. So, Newton knew about this phenomenon. So, the single slit pattern, or the pattern of interference pattern, is a pattern you can create with a single small aperture. So, any small aperture will create these... Uh, diffraction lines and um, they're caused by the same exact mechanism that creates the double slit pattern which is often displayed like this but actually looks like this if done correctly. The pattern has two patterns superimposed on each other. So it's just total not the truth. It doesn't explain the history. So let's understand that Newton did a ton of experiments with glass and uh, what happened when, when, with reflections. And it was found that he could polish glass and change how much light reflects off the glass. And that the change would go from 0%, so he'd get, if he did it just right, the glass wouldn't reflect any light at all. And if he tried to maximize the amount of reflection, it would go up to 16%. And so, and then if he made it a little thicker, it would go back to zero again. And then thicker, 16% again. So this is a cycle it would go through from zero through 16% by, I think, 4% intervals. So you go from zero to 4% to 8% to 16%, something like that. But at any rate, it's something kind of rigid. It's something quantized and it's a repeatable phenomenon and <clears throat> yeah and in the single slit what all it depends on is how small your aperture is the, if you make it very very small then you have very little pattern because you're just going to get this part of the pattern expanded but if you have a wide enough single slit the right distance you'll get a maximum pattern which will have a ton of these little interference bars. And they're not any different than these interference bars created by two waves interfering with each other. So I mean that's the real context. So this this video is overtly misrepresenting the truth when it showed the single slit and claiming the single slit does something different than these double slits do. It doesn't do anything different. Young's experiment demonstrated nothing. Um, the truth about Young's experiment too is it didn't demonstrate. I mean, it didn't demonstrate something Newton didn't already find. And if you look at the real, um, what Young really saw or what was drawn, I don't think there's any real photographs. Um, this is this is what he saw. Okay, was images, round images, which probably were just the sun being duplicated and they all had red shift and blue shift so all you did all you had was shift around them
I mean, hardly decisive evidence of anything. Um, and it didn't even have what was found to be the deeper pattern of this happening when you use laser light and do a more precise experiment. This is what you'll end up with, which won't be shown here either. So it just this Dr. Quantum video is a piece of garbage. It goes on to say all kinds of wacky things about experiments that were never even conducted ever. Um, you know, where they left the detectors on but didn't read the result from the detector and somehow the photon still made the double slit pattern, you know, if they didn't read the data. <laughs> you know, th that experiment never happened. And so the top play of one wave meets the bottom of another wave, they cancel each other out. So let's understand that in water waves, you're not going to create this pattern with a single slit. Okay, this pattern with a single water drop. It won't happen. No pattern here. Where two patterns, you get the pattern. So let's understand. The double slit looks like what light does. It's evidence of similarity. But the single slit is exactly the opposite. It's counter evidence. It's evidence of dissimilarity. It's evidence that light is doing something different because light creates a pattern without any two things interacting. There's just light and the aperture. Newton's ring. So if you just bisect Newton's rings, it's the single slit and, and or the double slit pattern. If I just cut this into a horizontal, you can see it's on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. Fact and such. So now, there is an interference pattern on the back wall. Places where the two tops meet are the highest intensity the bright water. Right. So let's just understand. You can duplicate this same pattern with a single slit. You just have to have it the right aperture, the right opening. And exactly the same pattern will be displayed. Nothing unique in the pattern between the single slit and the double slit. Except, like I said, in the nuance of the fact that in the true double slit, there's a pattern superimposed on a pattern. And when they cancel, there is nothing. So, when we throw things, that is, matter, through two slits, we get this. Two bands of hits. And with waves, we get an inter... So, uh, again, they're pretending that the matter bits are going to be affected the same way because they're using something just as um, dynamic as the micro universe. So the fact that photons interact with electrons and that electrons are on the surface of all matter, you know, we're not made out of a solid, your surface is not some kind of solid surface. Your structure isn't built that way. And the fact that all surfaces have a charge and that that charge is communicated to anything that comes close to that other surface and there's a kind of obligation for the two surfaces to have opposite charges. So when I bring my thing fingers together here, there's an obligation for one side to say, I'll go positive, and the other side to say, I'll go negative. They can't both be negative, and they both can't be positive. They'll create too much of a, um, uh, a pressure. So they have to accommodate the reality, and one of them has to be forced to go negative or positive. And that that circumstance is the circumstance likely creating this phenomenon, because this phenomenon only happens when you bring surfaces close together. And so to compare that to bowling alleys going down bowling alleys, bowling balls going down bowling alleys would be ludicrous. Because it, obviously the bowling alley isn't bigger and stronger and creating a force and charge and all this other stuff in any proportion to the size of the bowling ball. So it's a silly comparison. You don't compare electrons to bowling balls. I mean, a physicist should be able to say that at minimum, that 
those kind of analogies would likely get you in all kinds of trouble. But no, he doesn't say that. Here is pattern on many bands. Good so far. No, complete nonsense so far. So far, completely false premises. They're not true. The evidence doesn't support them. It's not the facts. It's crap. Absolute crap. And physicists who sit there and watch this crap happen don't even say, that's just crap. Now, let's go quantum. <coughs> okay, now you're going to freak out. <laughs> this, is where you, this is where you start getting mad. This is where he starts getting mad, so freak out. I don't know what all that crap means when he's going to make, he's going to be even more ludicrous than this ludicrousness. They're going quantum. I'm going quantum, I know. Tiny, tiny bit of matter. Ooh. Like a tiny marble. Let's fire a stream. You guys are already shaking slip. his head, folks. It's not a tiny marble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, photons clearly aren't, um, in, in, in the sense that, well, maybe they are, but tiny is a, a, an important cer word in this circumstance where tiny means it's a billion times smaller than the things that are around it. A billion times smaller, which isn't much different than this pen relative to the earth. And we see what happens to this pen relative to the earth. You're going to have to look at commentary on it. We can't just play the whole video. Right, right, Okay, right. I can do the con. I know exactly what they're talking about. Okay. It's a very famous experiment. So... Yeah. yeah, it's a very famous experiment that none of you honestly describe. Not a single one of you ever in the history of every single video by every one of these talking heads of physics, I haven't seen one single one of you accurately describe this dirt simple experiment. Why can't you do that? Oh, because you have an agenda, clearly. So, if you have two slits that you let marbles go through they get two slits in the receiving screen on the other side right whereas if you so so again all of this setup let's compare something apple and orange you know kumquat i mean you might as well just be comparing uh, you know platypuses and apples it's so far from being a realistic comparison let a wave go through two slits you get this interference pattern Right, and if you let a wave go through a single slit, you don't. Okay, no pattern. I let this wave go through a single slit, and I don't get any pattern. I just get waves again. No bars. Light, I get bars. Clearly, light's doing something fundamentally different. Because in a circumstance with just a single slit, it still creates the interference pattern. Right. And so what happens when you let an electron go through? The answer is you get an interference pattern. It's more like a wave than a particle. <clears throat> Again, so this drawing an absolute conclusion based on preposterously thin contradictory evidence. Evidence that contradicts the theory in the sense that the single slit in water doesn't match the single slit in light. And yet just because there is a similarity between two sources in a water experiment and what you get in light but it's not much of a similarity when you go a little deeper and you see that there's this double pattern which this doesn't create which water waves doesn't create the evidence is incredibly weak but the real weird thing that they're going to get to eventually is if you have if you let an electron go through two slits but you put little detectors on the slits. So you say, which detect, which slit did the electron go through? Right. And why would that be important when you already know it's happening with a single slit? How, how would be detecting that it went through the only slit available be useful information? See, there, there's just this canard that this has something to do with there being more than one slit. And it has nothing to do with more than one slit. It has to do with surfaces. And that's what they're not uh, thinking. You know, they're not using logic and saying, well, what's the difference? What's, what's a single slit have that could be any source of this um, circumstance? Well, what it has is two surfaces. And those two surfaces 
are obviously communicating with each other through charge because one of them is going to go positive and one of them is going to go negative. And the only way they can do that is they've got to be sending stuff back and forth, which means there has to be electrons here somewhere, which means the photons are likely hitting the charged electrons and that's what's sending them in precise diffractions. There's lots of possible explanations that don't have anything to do with these wooey explanations that photons have some sort of magic powers, that photons are complicated. Photons are the simplest thing in the universe. They only have two properties, polarization, and they move the speed of light in a straight line. That's it. And they're turning it into something else. Then it always says it goes through one or the other. It never goes through both and the interference pattern on the other side disappears. Now, obviously, it's going to disappear when your test instrument, right? You can't detect photons. You can't hit them with something ultra-mundane. You can only hit them with something as big as they are. So you're crashing a Volkswagen into a Volkswagen, and then you're surprised that the Volkswagen isn't going the same way it was going? Oh, I mean, how, how sensible or intuitive is that? You, <laughs> you only see the two lines that you would have seen if they were marble-like. So the point is, when you're not looking, the electron is acting like a wave, and when you look at it, the electron acts like a particle. Right. Okay. Right. And this has nothing to do with looking at it. It has nothing to do with these, you know, wishy-washy words. It has to do with whether you interfere with it. And obviously, if you interfere with it, it won't go where it was going. Is that too complicated? No, that's the simple explanation. You can't detect it without interfering with it. Duh. Kind of obvious. Yes, your experiment is corrupted by your effort to detect. The end. You don't draw the conclusion that it means something when you're looking and when you're not looking. No, when you're interfering and you're not interfering. Yeah, the results are different. Duh. It's the lesson of the double split experiment. Right. Why? <laughs> Why? Because when you put that detector on the slits, you interacted with the electron and you localized it, right? There was no such thing as the position of the electron. There was no such thing as the answer to the question. Right. Okay. So now they've done this thing with these things called Bucky balls, you know, 67 atom, whatever balls or clumps of stuff. And these are going to be the same explanations that the 67 atoms don't have a position that they're floating around in some sort of flux. So when they make this thing out of 150 atoms or 790 atoms or when they do the experiment with bigger and bigger things, are they keep going to keep claiming those things don't have a position and a velocity? It's just nonsense. You get to go through one slit or the other. There was only a cloud. There was only a wave going through. But you affected it, or whatever the detector was, affected it when it looked through the slits to see, did it go through this one or this one? And that effect changed it from being going through both slits to being only going through one. And how does it... <clears throat> yeah, and we don't even have, you don't even have anything to display in terms of an image of that actually happening. That's how there's so little detail <clears throat> in the evidence that's so critical to this wave theory. And yet we have so little details, because we don't even see those actual images of the detector changing and the fact that the detector doesn't create any influence at all. When I think it's probably pretty clear that the detector probably pushed the photons one direction or another. And they don't even admit that. It affected like that. Well, there's it's what, it's what's called quantum entanglement. The detector becomes entangled with the electron. And this is... <clears throat> So this is taking it a step even further than what they teach at MIT or other places. They don't claim entanglement or any of that crap um, as the excuse. They just simply state that obviously to detect a photon is fundamentally impossible because the truth is you can't even hit it with another photon. You have to hit it with an electron, something much bigger than it. And photons aren't going to win that battle. The momentum of the electron is going to win, not the momentum of the photon. So there's no way to detect photons without substantially interfering with them. So it's like hitting a, hitting a, a, a Volkswagen with a Mack truck. 
and then being surprised that the Volkswagen didn't just continue on its journey. This is where you get into what I, my favorite version of quantum mechanics, which is the many worlds interpretation. Right, so now he's not even talking about the physical experiment anymore. Now he's just going to talk about what they speculate to be the, you know, the magical adventure from the slit to the target that creates this pattern and this, this magical how does the photon know where to go you know and so it's the theory is either the photons all have radar and they you know figure out what the territory is and then do their probability math and figure out which way they're supposed to go or this nonsense that the entire universe just farted a new universe and they went both ways or they went all seven ways or all 16 ways the the right way to think about the electron was that cloud, that wave going through. That's the no, that's nonsense. It's silly. It's stupid. It's not physics. It's just mumbo jumbo. You're just making up heavens and angels and a whole bunch of drama and a whole bunch of sophisticated and complex purposes and nonsense. When no, it's the simplest thing in the universe, the photon. It's not doing any of that nonsense. There's some physical thing that causes it to go somewhere. It has to enter, something has to interfere with it for it to change where it would go normally. So when you put a two, uh, when you confine the space it goes through, you create a space that has more uh, uh, electrical potential and that le electrical potential is full of electrons and those electrons are dictating where the photon goes. It's an electron phenomenon, it's not a photon phenomenon. The natural thing. The weird thing is that when you look at the different slits, you only see it go through one or the other, and it acts like a particle. So how do you explain that? So no, how do you explain that when it lands, it's a particle? How do you explain how your wave converts itself into going to one thing? How does your wave spread and then reabsorb all of its radar to go one place? It sends out a bunch of tentacles and then it pulls them all back again so it can go one place with its full energy intact. That's nonsense. In other words, our natural intuitive way of thinking about electrons is as particles, little marbles. And quantum mechanics says, no, 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 it's naturally a wave. The weird thing is when it acts like a particle. All right, let's understand. Electrons have no evidence, there's no evidence whatsoever that an electron ever has in a frequency unless we impose it on it. So it has no wave function in its natural state at all. And they just have made up a canard, a lie, a pile of shit where they say, well, when it has momentum, we're just going to associate a certain speed with a certain amount of wave likeness. So the fact that an electron is charged, and so that's almost like saying it has kind of gravity. But let's just, you know, as people who understand what charge is, um, that it's going to be moved a certain way in, in any field that it goes into based on the charge, based on what side has what level of, of um, energy coming out of it. And, you know, that it's very rare that it's going to be a perfect balance for an electron. But anyway, um, and so this, this has nothing to do with electrons being anything like uh, having a frequency. But the fact is you can bend electrons in their path using magnetism, using a, um, a force that will push, they'll end up getting pushed by the energy in a direction based on the charge field they're going through. And, and um, so they're associating the fact that they can, you can do that. So, so you, it's almost like understanding that if I, if I had a magnet here and I was throwing a little BB at it, you understand that if I throw the BB slow, you know, just kind of let it lob into it, it could stick to the magnet really easy. But if I throw the BB fast, it's not going to stick. It might get bent a little, might be pushed a little bit in that direction of the magnet, but it won't stick. It'll just get swerved. So that's all they're doing. They're just saying that because we can associate momentum, you know, speed of how fast the Earth is traveling around the sun, if we decide if the Earth got, went twice as fast, it would fly out of its orbit. It would only get bent. It wouldn't be held in the orbit. So they're associating that and saying, well, that's just like deflection by electrons. That's the same force somehow. And it's not. It's not the same as light reflecting off a piece of glass. 
And if you're a many worlds person, what the answer you give is the following. When you look to see... Do these a many worlds person. Again, this has nothing to do with anything called physics in the sense that this is completely... has nothing to do with any evidence that exists. It's all just a made-up fable, like somebody talking about Thor being in the center of the earth, and he's, you know, bears bring him gold, and he hammers the bear gold into lightning bolts, and you can make up a whole big preposterous story, and there's not one shred of evidence for any of it. And there's not one shred of evidence for any of this crap they're making up as an explanation for the physical phenomenon. It's just made up, completely made up. Electron go through one slit or the other, you or whatever video camera you had or whatever becomes entangled with the electron, and what that means is that the yeah yeah what that means is is there are special magical forces that somehow entangle the things. It's somehow they they have an umbilical of some kind where they're communicating with each other with nothing, with no 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 substance, no no reality, no physical entity of any kind whatsoever. Just our magical. ESP or something. Just made up crap. A function of the whole universe, the wave function of both the electron but also your camera and you and the stars and galaxies and so forth. <clears throat> yeah, whatever that even means, right? That somehow everything is connected to everything in the special everything connected to everything way. When we when when the facts indicate that no, something real has to connect you. Some ton of some kind. There's, you know, they'll concede that they exist in the, in the atom. They concede that virtual photons, they call them, because they can't see them. They can't find them as individual tons, because there's obviously no way to measure them inside of an atom. Um, but they're conceding their existence because they know that's how they're communicating. They don't sit there and say, oh, they're just magically entangled. Why don't they just rewrite the standard model? And instead of calling it a Higgs or calling it a a new neutrino or something else, why don't you just call everything entanglement particle? Splits in two. And there is now one branch of the wave function which, which acts like its own separate world, which says the electron went through the left slit and your camera saw it go through the left slit and it made a little line on the other side. And there's another branch which says the electron went through the right slit and your camera Yeah, yeah, and, and what's, what's the point of it, right? Because it made a little line where? I mean, it's still going to mean you still have to explain why the lines are in all these different places. So regardless of what slit, what slit it goes through, is it going to tell you why it's here or why it's here or why it's here or why it's here or why it's in these different positions? So you're still not explaining anything. You're still not explaining how it did the calculus to figure out which way to go. The right slit and it makes a line on the other side. And so they're both still there, but the world's split in two, and now you're only in one of them. You don't see the whole world anymore. Yeah, right. And that happens every single time a photon interacts with anything. So it's not the multiverse. It's the preposterously nonsensical zillion universe per zillionth of a second. So there's a new zillion universes every zillionth of a second. F fucking bullshit. You managed to make it more confusing. Congratulations. <laughs> you, you screwed my head up even more. I, did that, I understand it less now. That's even more baffling. But the bit you understand is actually true. That's the truth. <laughs> well, it's a little. The illusion of understanding. Yeah, right. And he doesn't have a bit that he understands. Because the history's been slaughtered. The real context is n ignored. Um, you know, experiments are preposterously exaggerated. It's just all nonsense. There's, there's no truth anywhere in this. There's nothing honest about any of it. Ending doesn't count. <laughs> oh, okay. So by ha, 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 ha. we're, you know, we're talking head physicists, and everybody just buys whatever fucking bullshit we just make up and spout to these losers and these idiots because they're not smart enough to figure out we're full of shit. They're, you know, they're not going to bother doing any research and actually looking it up and see what the actual experiments that have been done actually demonstrate. Oh, hell with that. Not understanding, I understand more. Exactly. Ooh, there you go. Boy, Quantum you bio. have a weird job, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's just all weird to lie about reality. Yeah, that's just part of the fun of being human. But that's all this. It's just so overtly a misrepresentation 
of the character and weight of the evidence. It's such a silly exaggeration. Anyway, so I, you know, it goes on to multiverse, all this other crap. So I don't know if I'll bother doing other ones of these, but it's just so bad. I mean, I don't want to watch the whole thing. It's two hours long, two and a half hours or something. Yeesh. No, thank you. Um, two hours and 41 minutes. Yeesh. Well, maybe I'll try someday. But anyway. This just sucks. That these people can get away with this shit. And there's nobody that's allowed to stand up and say... What? You don't got anything. You got nothing proving that. Nothing. 